right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started this afternoon, and I want to thank you all for coming, and I want to make a couple of uh, um, recognitions of some people who are here with us this afternoon before we really get started and uh, get things going. First of all, I want to appreciate um, Representative Noreen Hammond is with us this afternoon. We always can count on Noreen for her support, so thank you, Noreen, for being here. <laughs> Our Macomb Mayor, Mike Inman, is, always, is with us, as always. Appreciate, Mike, everything that you do. And our board chair, Polly Radosh, is here this afternoon as well. So thank you, Polly. Now, I also know that we have a number of people joining us up in the Quad Cities and around campus watching us on the, the live stream on the University Facebook page. And I would also like to acknowledge um, Kate Jennings Gerber, who was the uh, district representative for Sherry Bustos, who's watching with us up in Moline. So thank you as well. Kate, for being with us this afternoon. Thank you. So what I wanted to do this afternoon was to spend a little bit of time recapping what's occurred over the past six months, and really more importantly, to talk about where we're headed in, in the coming months. And I'll start with the retrospective. So, I'm going to start with what I believe to be a relatively bold statement, and that is, and I, I hope that you all concur with this, that Western Illinois has turned the corner. We're headed in the right and, I believe, a positive direction and setting a strong future for this outstanding university and for the tremendous communities that it calls home. We continue to benefit from outstanding faculty and staff dedicated to the success of our students. We will succeed because the people here embody incredible spirit and fortitude, as do our students. We outperform others' expectations. We dig deeper, work harder, and get the job done. You make great things happen at Western. And as long as you continue to believe in the success of the university, we have a tremendously bright future. I've been really fortunate to be able to latch on to the spirit and to bring it into greater focus for the specific tasks that we've needed to complete. We've rededicated our commitment to increasing enrollment. As I've attended our Discover Western events and other recruiting activities, I've seen the strength of the faculty, the staff, and the students, all of whom who work side by side with the admissions staff to ensure that prospective students get the best possible image of Western. We've invested because we know the future is based on the strength of the incoming class. Another strength is our tireless determination to assure the success of our students. Everyone admitted to Western has a good chance to succeed. This year, we've developed new programs that identified early on students who were struggling, and then we've provided support to assist these students to help them succeed. That work has already paid off as our fall to spring new freshman retention is currently around 85 percent, an increase of nearly <laughs> an increase of nearly five percent relative to where we were at this time last year. We recognize that every one of our the importance of every one of our students, and you have again stepped up and worked hard to provide that needed support, and that's everybody, faculty staff, everybody who's part of the university. We still have a long way to go, and changes do not happen overnight. But the preliminary enrollment numbers are showing some positive results. Our spring enrollment appears to be relatively strong. It looks like we will have more new graduate students this year than we had last year. And our new freshmen and transfer admits, while still down, are not down by as much as they have been 
in prior years. Overall, it looks like our spring enrollment also may not be down as much as one would have projected based on the number of students that we enrolled in the fall. As you know, once you hit in fall enrollment, those numbers get baked in for a year's period of time. So being able to recover a little bit of that on the spring gives us a head start towards next fall. The admissions staff is processing applications quickly, and we have more admitted students for the fall of 2020 than we did at this time last year. Our challenge now is to convert those admits into registered students. In addition to the many programs we've had, such as the Western Express and the Discover Western, and events at community colleges to encourage transfer enrollments, we're also developing new programs to assist the yield effort, including an admitted student day on March 23rd during which we will connect students with academic departments through a series of college-based activities, and a buddy program that will connect a prospect, an admitted student, with a current student. I have said since I took over in July that our target was to have a larger incoming class for the fall of 2020 than we did in the fall of 2019. This remains our goal, and a goal that remains well within our reach. I would also like to now state a secondary goal, and that is to have a greater enrollment in the fall of 2020 than we have in the spring of 2020. Now that sounds a little counterintuitive. The fall enrollment should always be higher than the spring enrollment. But that's not been the case here at Western. We've experienced six straight semesters of declining enrollment. So when we achieve our enrollment goal in the fall of 2020, we will begin a new chapter in the history of WIU, one of growth and expansion. With your help and support, we will create a strong and positive future. We are also taking crucial steps to overcome the diversity challenges that we face, both in Macomb and in Quad Cities. We've been heavily gauged in Macomb, working with the mayor and community leaders to ensure that our diverse populations are welcomed into our community. Last week, I joined with community leaders to sign a resolution that makes it clear that hate will not be tolerated in our community. And this community values and embraces diversity and inclusion. I've also met with community leaders in the Quad Cities and have discussed with them their commitments to diversity and inclusion and know that they have similar ideals and objectives for the community up there. There is a strong commitment in both Macomb and in the Quad Cities to support our institution's diverse population to the benefit of our faculty, staff, and students. I will reiterate my intention to work with our host community's leadership as we continue to engage Western within these conversations. While Dr. Sadler presented our diversity initiatives at last month's board meeting, I want to highlight a few of our action plans. To date, here in Macomb, we've had seven dialogues in the community and at the university to discuss the issues and concerns facing our minority populations and the environment in which they live, work, and learn. Past couple of days, we had nearly 300 faculty, staff, and students between both our campuses participate in a half a day compassionate communication workshop led by J.Q. Adams and Tracy Davis. We are reconstituting our University Diversity Council, developing a community engagement council to ensure that our efforts both on campus and in our communities continue. These groups serve in an advisory capacity to the President on issues regarding diversity, equity, 
and inclusion. In addition, a student diversity coalition has been formed, comprised of students from our multicultural centers and other representatives, including volunteers who have signed up to be part of the action plan. Beginning this Wednesday, two days from today, and meeting over the next few weeks, we'll be hosting a discussion on both campuses of the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. I know I've read about a third of the book. I find it very compelling, and I'm looking forward to participating in as much of that discussion as I can. And plans are in the works to develop a student-focused workshop, as well as have other dialogues facilitated by us and by others. I would also like to take a moment to welcome to Western Carl Irvin and welcome back alumnus Jerome Halsey, who began their roles as program coordinator and events coordinator, respectively, for the Multicultural Center back in the middle of December. Carl and Jerome will serve as resource and support points, advocates and mentors for the diverse student population served by the MCC. I'd also like to thank Rocio Ayarda Choa for her tireless leadership as the director of the Multicultural Center. Through Rocio's efforts, the Multicultural Center is partnering with the admissions staff to assist with recruitment efforts and providing presentations and tours to prospective students and families. It really is a university-wide effort, both on admissions and diversity, and they go hand in hand to helping us ensure our success. The work ahead of Western to enact change is going to need an enormous amount of continued support and collaboration within our campus and our communities Issues cannot and will not be ignored, and the reaction time from appropriate authorities, administrators, and allies will be immediate and purposeful. On the budget front, we have the opportunity to end the year in the black for the first time since fiscal year 2017. Our ability to achieve this goal ultimately depends on our diligence to hold the line on spending for the remainder of this current fiscal year. We must continue to spend under our departmental budgets, both operating and personnel. This does not mean our work is done, as our budgeted expense remains greater than the actual revenue we are bringing in. Further, because of consecutive yearly declines in new student enrollment, we know that tuition revenue will be less next fiscal year than it is this fiscal year. And we still do not know what amount the state will grant us in our FY21 budget and beyond. To bring our budgeted expense in line with actual revenue, we must continue to identify reductions. However, because of your efforts to reduce expenditures, and the expectation that you will continue to identify opportunities to reduce costs. We do not need to take any extraordinary measures to further rein in spending. It's been an exciting six months, and we've made some outstanding progress, but we do have a lot more work ahead of us. One of the questions I was asked during my last visit to the Faculty Senate had to do with the selections that we made for the hiring of faculty. And I will reemphasize, we have over 20 faculty positions that we are currently searching here at the university. But in terms of the selection, it's a fair question to ask why those particular choices were made. Because what we really do need is a cohesive strategic plan to know into which programs we should be investing. And make no mistake, we will be investing in new programs. I have my own views on growth opportunities. But these decisions should be debated, debated by faculty, developed through analysis of data 
and vetted with others in our community. We need to decide how large Western should become. We need to determine how our Quad Cities campus can provide unique value to our students while also supporting the needs of that population. We need to identify the unique aspects of the education provided in Macomb that will resonate with potential students and help them to make informed choice that Western is the right place for them to invest their future. We need to figure out the role of distance education in our mix of offerings. And if we intend for it to be significant, then we need to determine how we provide the support services to a population of students that may never set foot on one of our campuses. All of this should happen through a strategic planning process that engages faculty, staff, and students. We will initiate this process this semester, assembling our data and identifying team members, and in begin in earnest with robust discussions in the fall. Also on the list of things to do is continue to invest in retention efforts. We need to bring all of our resources together to ensure that a student enroll that enrolls at Western will, in fact, graduate from Western. We've done some things that provide support for the class of 2023, but there's even more opportunity. And there's even more that we can do now that can pay, pay huge dividends for the class of 2024. We need to be looking critically at the nature of the next generation of Western students. How can we connect with our community college partners to provide seamless transition for the growing population of students who start off at a community college and then want to transfer to a four-year institution to earn a bachelor's degree? What should we be doing today to make sure we are a desirable location for these future students so that the enrollment growth we're working so hard to achieve today continues for the foreseeable future? How can we expand the opportunities for our students to participate in high-impact learning experiences, which benefit all students by engaging them in activities that test their cumulative learning, allowing them to practice what they have been taught throughout their life experience? These experiential opportunities can take many forms, study abroad, undergraduate research, first-year experience, learning communities, internships, service learning, and more. We offer some of these already, but we could and we should offer so much more. We just need to invest and make smart cho choices with our limited resources, which returns us to the need for a well-thought-out and robust strategic plan that guides our growth for the next several years. Finally, I'd like to assure everyone that I intend to be here and see this strategic plan developed and many of its programs implemented. I am committed to the success of this institution and hope to remain here for many years to come. The board and the search committee will do their work, but we will continue to work together to shape the future of Western Illinois University. To that end, I've started to make some changes in our leadership to develop a team that is thinking about the future, that is committed to working collaboratively with faculty and staff, and that is invested for the long haul. Letitia Trepak has agreed to serve as the Associate Vice President for Budget and Finance, and will oversee the financial operations of the university. She will be assisted in that role by Keitra Roselieb, who will work with the existing excellent leadership in all of our human resources related areas to provide some uniformity and common vision. I've heard about some of the challenges that are faced when we try to hire new faculty and staff. Working with Stephanie Kincaid, Amelia Hartnett, and Amy Chambers, Keitra 
will provide us some fresh ideas that can help us to streamline our hiring processes. Our facilities, all of which are a little bit older, and I think we can all agree need renovations and repair, will continue to be led by Troy Rhodes, who will assume the title of Executive Director for Facilities Management. Troy will work directly with me so that we can effectively manage our aging infrastructure to support the needs of our faculty and students. And I will have direct knowledge of our needs so that I can communicate these needs back to Springfield and to alumni and potential donors to gain the resources that we need to, to improve the state of our facilities. Our facilities management team has some important work to do since we just heard from the Capital Development Board that they have released $8.9 million to restart the construction and planning effort for our new Performing Arts Center. We've also formed a new enrollment management division. Some of you may have already met Gary Swiegen, a former colleague of mine from Youngstown State. During his five years running the enrollment management division at Youngstown, we saw increased enrollment and retention numbers. Prior to that, and after he left, enrollment at Youngstown decreased. I don't know what magic Gary has, but I'm expecting some of that magic to come here. Gary is here only for a six-month stint. In addition to leading that division, as Interim Associate Vice President, he's going to help us find a, permanent, a permanent replacement for this position with a search committee that's being led by Angela Lynn. The search committee is designated to find someone who can lead this area for the future and work with faculty and staff to build a robust set of programs that will serve Western for the long term. These important additions are all funded by my decision that dissolved the Administrative Services Division, which has provided us, after all of these changes, roughly $100,000 in budget savings, even after the added investment in these new personnel resources. I want to conclude this afternoon by thanking the Board for their confidence that they have expressed in me as they've asked me to continue to serve as your interim president. I would also like to especially thank all of you for the support that you provided over the last six months and the continued support as we move forwards on these initiatives. I was especially gratified by the positive comments received in the response to the surveys that developed, were developed by Chair Radosh and the strong messages of support that I have received here from individuals here on campus and in the community. We still have a lot of work to do, and we must continue to move deliberately, vigorously, and quickly to implement the changes that are required to get better, to be viewed as more attractive for prospective students, to recruit the very best faculty and staff, including those dean's searches that we have underway, as well as those faculty and staff searches in addition. Our continued success over the coming months will allow us to engage in even greater opportunities to continue to grow as an institution and to continue to serve the people of Illinois. We're here for the long haul, and I appreciate the opportunity to be on this ride with you. Thank you. That concludes everything. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs>